Hey everyone, this is Dr. Kyle with Ice Clinics bringing you your next tip for Tuesday. I've thought that it's been a while since we've discussed the jaw, so I figured today might be a good excuse to bring up a real simple tip with the jaw and kind of better understanding how the jaw works in relationship, especially with not just the head, but even the neck as well. I think a lot of us think of the jaw as a very simple joint in that it kind of moves up and down, kind of like a hinge joint. But we have these unique uh, pieces of anatomy in these joint capsules that have what's known as a bilaminar disc. And this disc and the joint capsule itself actually allows for some wiggle room side to side. So not so much up and down. And I find a lot of times with our patients, this is where our jaw dysfunction, also known as TMJ or TMD, very commonly, uh, will come from. It's kind of in that wiggle effect. <clears throat> What I wanted to point out to you guys, not just using this model, but up here, um, it's really easy to look at the relationship of the jaw, the bottom of the skull called your occiput bone, and then this top bone right here, which is your C1, or also known as your atlas. These three things have to be in a very precise uh, fitting and positioning to make sure that there's no aggravation from one piece of anatomy to another. Uh, very often we find people with TMJ or TMD, uh, TMD uh, pains, they have issues with this upper neck junction where this bone meets up with the bottom of the skull. And if you can just visually appreciate how much space there is right there, if you start to migrate this bone forward towards the jaw, migrate the jaw back towards there, compress the bone down into both of these junctions, you might be asking for a lot of trouble. So. For those of you out there with jaw trouble, and you've maybe been to a TMJ specialist or had lots of focus put on the jaw, what I'm trying to say is make sure that you appreciate the other components of this lower skull and this upper neck because the three usually coincide together. Now the tip I wanted to show you, a real easy way for you to kind of self-diagnose yourself is to take your finger and place it right behind your jaw. So when you're looking at your, uh, at your neck, you should see that this little protuberance there on your C1, that sticks out towards the side. So you should be able to, when you put your finger back there behind your jaw, you should be able to kind of roll your finger right into a little bony protuberance there. Now the key is, what you really want to do is try doing it to both sides at the same time. And like in myself, I feel that my jaw is more kind of wedged backwards on this left side which might be jamming up my neck on that particular side as well. So just by taking your fingers and placing them back here and trying to feel for those little bony nubs, that might give you a lot more information as far as what's going on, not just with your jaw, but even your neck as well. So hopefully that answers uh, some of your questions in regards to jaw health. Maybe you have a little better understanding with that complex in general. But if you have any more questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Again, I'm Dr. Kyle with Ice Clinics. Thanks for watching.